Hello, Mike Cadero here with a quick tutorial on how to use the comps from spreadsheet script for After Effects. It's a script that's going to take data from your spreadsheet and put it in text layers in your After Effects compositions. So here's a hypothetical situation. Uh, you just created a couple spots for your client and they call, they're gushing over it. They think it's the greatest thing they've ever seen. They're in love with it. They don't want to change anything. Like I said, it's uh, hypothetical. So you're happy, they're happy, you're getting ready to celebrate, and they email over this monstrosity of a spreadsheet. They need 60 different versions with different phone numbers, and names, and ISCII codes, and you're gonna spend the better part of the afternoon duplicating and cutting and pasting. It's gonna just be torture. Well, if you use the script, uh, you're not going to have to do all that. Basically, what it's going to do, it's going to go line by line through the spreadsheet, and it's going to grab the composition here, and it's going to duplicate it and put all this text in different text layers that you will map out. I'll show you how to do that. It's uh, pretty easy. Uh, first thing to keep in mind is that after Effects can't read this Excel document. If you try to feed this to After Effects, it's just going to laugh at you, which could potentially hurt your feelings, so don't do it. What you need to do is you need to convert it into something After Effects does understand, and that something is called a tab delimited text document. And any database program or spreadsheet program is going to be able to convert to this format. So we're going to do save as a text tab delimited. And we'll go, now we've created this grid.txt file from our spreadsheet. Definitely does not look as pretty as our spreadsheet. Um, but to After Effects, it's going to look gorgeous. This is exactly what After Effects loves. It's just straight text. One thing uh, I forgot to mention, it's my first tutorial, so uh, cut me some slack. In your spreadsheet, you need the very first line, instead of being data, you need it to be kind of headings. So this is basically the name of this column. Phone number is the name of the third column and so on and so forth, which uh, m most people normally do because how else then do you know what the column is? So back to our project, what we need to do is now we need to set up some text layers to be targeted by our script. And the way you do that is you just start out the text with the caret symbol, which is shift six on your keyboard. So we're gonna just call this text document shift six for name, shift six is key. And this we're gonna call shift six date, which actually doesn't correspond to anything in here. That's actually a reserved word in the script, which means today's date. So when script runs, it's gonna insert today's date into there. And finally, shift six, and we'll just call it phone. And we need to do that with, we're going to need to do the same thing with the first spot. We need to make all our layers again. Let's see, shift six, name. You just want to make sure you use the same name for things that are coming from the same column. We're going to make this the date, so today's date will be in there. And then, last but not least, phone number. Okay, so we've set up all our text layers, now we can uh, run the script. Okay, scripts, comps from spreadsheet. Uh, it's going to go through, picks out all the compositions in the project, and it wants you to pick out which ones are actually going to be used in this operation. It's just spot one and spot two. We're going to ignore the slate text composition. And now it asks us to find that grid file. Again, don't pick your Excel document out. It won't be able to do anything with that. We want the grid.txt that we just created. And you'll notice now it has these fields, which are coming from, remember I told you you had to make these heading names. And underneath of the, each of those headings is a drop-down box. Um, the first line of the drop-down box is COMP, all in caps, which we'll get to in a second. Underneath that is the three text layers that we created with the caret symbol. You remember caret name, caret ISCII, and caret phone. Well, we have name, ISCII, and phone underneath there. And basically what we're doing is 
we're syncing up those text layers with the columns in the spreadsheet. Um, and you'll see the program was smart enough to pick out that because our name heading is the same as the name text layer, it kind of picked that out for us from the drop down box, as with ISCII. Phone it did not get because in our heading it's called phone number and our text layer we just called phone, but that's fine. We'll just pick out phone from the drop down, phone number from the drop down box and uh, all's good. So that brings us to the very first name in the drop down box, which is COMP, all in caps. What that's going to tell the script that this column is where we're getting the name of the After Effects composition to use for that line. Remember, when we started the script, we picked out two compositions, Comp 1 and Comp 2. Um, so for each line, the script needs to know which one of those compositions to be used. That Comp name, that's going to tell the script that this column is where it's getting the name of which composition to use. So basically, when we're done, after we've set up all these fields, it's going to basically go line by line through our database and it's for the column that we picked out as our comp column it's going to pick the composition in our project that's of the same name it's going to duplicate it and it's going to give it the name of the line number and any text layer that has a caret in it it's going to grab the data from the column in our spreadsheet that we've synced up with that and it's going to put it in the render queue with our default output module and render settings um, to be rendered in a folder called render in the same directory as our project and it's gonna move on to the next one um, so here we go we've set up all our layers we'll click OK it asks us if we want to save a copy sure let's save a copy we'll call it copy uh, yes now it starts chugging through line by line and it comes up with an error at line 54 there's no spot named SPO2 are you kidding me? Those knuckleheads at the ad agency uh, misspelled spot 2 and called it SPO2. That's fine, we have a drop down box and it's asking us which one we want to use for line 54 since it can't figure out from SPO2 that that actually should be spot 2. Click OK. And now you'll notice you have lots and lots of compositions that have numbers. Those numbers correspond with the line in the text document. So line 40, if we go and look for the comp named 40, it should have grabbed spot 2, which it did. The name should be Krusty the Clown. Let's go look at our slate. Yeah, indeed, Krusty the Clown is the name. Put today's date in the date column. Uh, ISCII code 4575745. It did that properly. And last but not least is the phone number. And uh, it did that as well. So it basically went through line by line. It picked the right composition, made a copy of it, renamed it the line number, and even put it in the render queue. All you got to do now is hit render, and you're done. Um, one thing to keep in mind, since you are going to be rendering 60 some odd versions, um, when I originally created this commercial, it was probably like 50 layers effects, and it probably took like 20 minutes to render. So if we're making 60 copies of that and rendering it, if it take take 20 minutes a piece, that's uh, going to take a real long time. So what I did is I pre-rendered everything except for the text layers that I'm going to be targeting and that, that are going to be changing. Um, all the text layers that are not changing, I left in the spot. And uh, you can also use it if you make a lot of slates. It'll, uh, you know, you can just make up a slate template and um, chug away at that.